everybody welcome back to the channel nice to see you again today we're going to get this tank set up we're going to be using co2 with a new co2 thing and i'm going to be talking about the benefits pitfalls what works what doesn't let's get into it i've got all the plants that i've currently got in there i want to have a lot more plants in here ultimately about ready to get fish in but i want to consider co2 now often co2 can be one of those divisive subjects where you don't have enough plants to warrant it oh it's dangerous oh it's a, it's fiddly it's a faff all those things have some element of truth, I believe. And as I was reminded on my live stream the other night, it doesn't really matter how many plants you have, CO2 will be beneficial to them and make them grow better. But obviously, the more you have and the more demanding plants you have, the more of a necessity CO2 is. But therein lies the problem. CO2 is a faff. Whether you're going and sourcing some CO2 from somewhere, you're going to dye shops, you're going to welding shops, you're going to find fire extinguishers, or you're using the little aerosol cans, it's a faff. Fire extinguishers and this sort of thing are not cheap, they're not easy to find, and they're complex. You have to get special valves and all kinds of different things on there. So uh, it's, a, it's a bit of an investment is what I'm saying. It's not something you just want to have a go at and try. Uh, and that can be dangerous because you get these things called end of tank dumps, where because this is a pressurized system, when the tank gets down to a certain point, depending on how good or bad your valve is, it can just dump what's left of the tank into your tank and not good things will happen. So what alternatives have we got? <laughs> Heavy as well and dirty. So there's DIY versions you'll have seen where you get your plastic bottles full of yeast and things like that and they sit alongside. If you want something in between, this is where the sponsored part of the video comes in, I've been sent this. So this is the Bio CO2 kit from Fluval. It's the kind of middle ground between your high pressure systems and your DIY slash manual systems. This is the low pressure CO2. Basically what you get is a, a big canister, which is going to be your CO2 production chamber. And it takes the elements of the do-it-yourself stuff, because you're using yeast and activators and things like that, which will pressurize this canister at a low pressure. And then you get the benefits of the automatic systems in that you control how much you get out of it. Their claim is that this gets you uh, once set up about a month's worth of use. So you have to change it once a month rather than the can systems where you have to do it every day and then change the cans every couple of weeks, depending how much you use. This is rated for aquariums of 250 litres. This is more than 250 litres. So I probably won't get a month out of it, but it's just a trial. Um, new for me, new to you. I'll show you what happens and how we set it up. So I can't talk about pricing yet because I don't know how much it's going to cost, but I'm sure when we find out, someone will put it down in the comments. Uh, like I say, this is the 250 litre kit sent to me by Fluval. So complete transparency. Everything that came with it, we have the diffuser. So quite a nice looking diffuser, I'm not gonna lie. A glass diffuser. We've got the drop checker. This is vital in my experience. I might link a video up here of where I got this completely wrong. It monitors the, the pH of your aquarium. So you're looking for a certain color in this drop checker. This goes inside your aquarium. When there's too much CO2, that changes color and lets you know, but it changes color hours after the problem materializes. So um, it, it's kind of useful and useless in equal measure, but good to have, if nothing else. We've got a refill for the activator and the yeast. I'm, just, I'm saying yeast, I'm assuming it's yeast. Well, yeah, it does say yeast on it. Um, this is the bubble counter. So let's set it up. We've got a little connector check valve here. Uh, and the instructions, I mean, it's fairly self-evident what you've done. If you've ever done any CO2 before or DIY versions, you'll be fine. But lots of pictures, really simple steps, quite straightforward. So inside the bubble counter, there's a spare gasket that you have to take out. There's a little spare gasket, you need to remove that. And then again, fairly obviously, there's a bit for you to connect your airline one side and a side that screws on to the top of this. Like so. And then what you've got here is your fine control for increasing or decreasing the amount of bubbles that you get there. Bubbles are just how you measure the CO2, so you count how many bubbles you want to get to your optimum range. Connect your CO2 line onto the little nipple. 
In the past I have just used airline for this, but this is special CO2 line. And the difference being that it's thicker walled, so less gas escapes. But I've never found it to be a particular issue. But nice to see they include the good stuff. So ideally I want to mount this somewhere where it's going to get the most contact with the water. So what the diffuser is going to do is going to break up the CO2 into tiny, 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 tiny bubbles, which then have more chance to get into the water column. So if we didn't have this and just use big bubbles, it would just, the bubble would just go straight to the surface, break the surface and away it would go and it wouldn't actually get into the water column. Whereas this with the small bubbles and many of them gives it more of a chance. So I want to mount it low into the aquarium and underneath the return for the filter because then the filter will blow the bubbles give them even more contact time with the water and hopefully kind of maximizing its benefit so for the actual making of co2 bit they give you these little boosters and activators and it's a case of putting them in so for the 250 model which is i've got they say two boosters and two activators The activators just smell like yeast. Two boosters, two activators, 500 grams of sugar, and then fill it with water to the line that's inside here. It says tap water, but I'm sure this won't hurt. One other step I forgot to mention was to make sure you fill your bubble counter full of water, otherwise you will have no bubbles to count. But once that's done, you've got all your stuff in, it's a case of just tightening the lid. Hand tight and waiting 24 hours and it should start producing bubbles. You want to make sure that this is closed, this needle valve here is actually closed so as it can build up the pressure. If you forget, um, it's not going to turn into a bomb because it does have a pressure release valve at the top here as well. So, come back this time tomorrow and we'll see how we got on. This took me all of six minutes to set up. So, make of that what you will. A fully pressurised system with all the valves and things that comes with that. Way longer. Um, it's quite nice and unobtrusive. I guess this goes in your cabinet. Uh, I'm going to put it up there just so as I can see what's going on just now. Um, but the brushed stainless steel effect, yeah, it's not bad. Little, little bit of, I don't know, it's not a two litre pop bottle or a series of two litre pop bottles trying to create the stuff with packets of yeast and stuff like that. It looks like a premium product. It looks good. So let's hope it performs good as well. One of my favorite types of CO2 in the past, because I've tried them all from the pressurized systems, to the DIY ones, is I quite actually like the Bell ones um, because you can control that. It very much relies on you remembering to do it, but basically you have a can or a soda stream bottle or something like that, and you release daily an amount into a, a container of CO2 and then just over the day it slowly absorbs into the water. It's quite good, really hard to get wrong. Um, that's kind of what I'm hoping for from this is hard to get wrong, hard to make damaging mistakes. Let's see how we go. Right, I'm not going to lie, it's a few days later, we've had some issues. Um, I went through, left it 24 hours, went to test it, nothing happened. Left it another 24 hours, I just test it, more nothing happened. Opened up the, the chamber, it does have this pressure release valve here. Um, nothing happened when I pressed that, opened it up, it didn't go poo or anything like that. It just seemed dead. So I don't know what happened with there. So we've got a brand new set of the whole bio CO2 activator and boosters. Put in the required amounts, waited 24 hours. Nothing happened. <laughs> Starting to get a little bit suspicious at this point, but this time when I opened it up to have a look, it did make a little poof, as if some pressure was building up inside there. So I decided to swap out various things to see if I could make a difference. So it's taken me a few days to get to this point to diagnose it. And what I think has happened is the bubble counter, a valve within the bubble counter, something wasn't right. So this is a, a second hand, well, it's one of my old bubble counters I've swapped on and now when you turn it on, let's see if we can get it to focus. Yay! Does exactly what we want. So we can refine it with the needle valve to get to the bubble count that you want. And basically you just want to count how many bubbles it produces a second and that will determine how much CO2 you're using. 
So it's working perfectly now. And if I hook this up to this tank, you'll be able to see it coming through in the diffuser in the tank. Now this unit is not rated for this size tank. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes um, to give you an idea. But my general rule of thumb with this is any CO2 is better than no CO2 when you have a planted aquarium. That's one of the things reminded me on my previous live streams. Come and join me on my live streams, by the way. Sometimes you get useful information. But I was a bit worried that I just wouldn't get enough CO2. Final thoughts. I mean, it's working now. It does what it says on the tin, but I can't deny that I did have some problems. I don't know whether I got a bad batch of the CO2 yeasty refill things, and that was combined with some shipping damage to maybe this got damaged in shipping. I had to make some fixes, but once made, it does work. But I don't want to hide from the fact that we did have some initial problems. Um, I do like the look of it. I think it looks quite sleek. I love the brushed steel. It's a better than some crinkly old Pepsi Max bottles or something underneath your aquarium. I like the fact that you don't have to use these. You could use the traditional DIY methods and just have a nice container for it to do it in. Um, it feels high quality. I know I did have a problem with this, but it's exactly the same as the one I replaced it with. Um, you're obviously limited in as such that you don't have um, anywhere to hook on a solenoid, so quite often in the high pressure systems. In contrast, here's the, the pressurized CO2 system. So you can see we've got the, the tank itself, the valves, the one on the right saying how much is left in the tank, the one on the left saying how much is being put out. Going through a solenoid which controls when it comes on and off because it's linked to a timer through to a needle valve to control the fine amount of bubbles that come out and then your bubble counter. So from this point on, it's the same as the Fluval one. I would have a solenoid hooked up so I could just leave it on and this turns it on during the day and turns it off during the night because the optimal method is to have CO2 running during the day and um, not during the night. But you could turn it down low enough so as it could be on 24 hours. Of it would be fine, it just wouldn't be optimised. Um, maybe I could try and see if I could retrofit a solenoid valve onto it. But if you're interested in that, let me know. I might have a bash at it. We might give it away as a competition prize from the live stream. So come along Friday night, 9pm UK time uh, and convince me to use it as a prize. But yeah, I, I like it. I do have my big pressurised system. So whether it's for me, I don't know. But if I had a tank in the house that I wanted to have as a planted tank, yeah, I, I would definitely consider this. Obviously, I don't know the cost yet. I don't know um, anything about longevity. So if you're interested in that, hit that subscribe button. We'll see for how long we can run it for. And I'll give you updates through the Discord server on live streams and things like that. Or maybe make a follow-up video. Um, but so far, yeah, kind of impressed. As always, thanks for watching me. I hope you found something useful in this. And if I can find the SD card I used to record me putting the fish in this tank, I'll maybe make that video next. Otherwise, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.